Hello viewers, welcome back to our history class. Your teacher, as always, is teacher Roger Michira, taking you through history form four, and the topic of discussion is non-aligned movement, well known as NAM. The station you're watching is the Limu TV, your favorite learning station. Now class, today's class, we're getting to look at the non-aligned movement. We get to know what is this non-aligned movement, what is NAM, right? What was it, how, how can you trace its origin? Right? What are some of the reasons for the rise of NAM as an organization? Right? Now remember, in this all along topic, we have been looking at the international organizations. Right? We, looked, we started from the League of Nations, we went to United Nations Organization, then we have come to Commonwealth. Now today, we will get to NAM. That is the non-aligned movement. So what do we expect by the end of the lesson class? We expect we are able to trace or describe or discuss the origin of NAM. Right? How can you trace? Where can you trace NAM from? Right? What is the origin? How did it develop as an organization or rather as an international organization? Good. Welcome all and let us learn. Now the formation of NAM. Now one thing you must realize about NAM, it also means non-aligned movement. Non-aligned movement from the word non-aligned, meaning it does not align itself. Right? It, or the, it, it does not, it, it does not, uh, it has got no principles that are like other organizations, right? It is independent. So it is the kind of neutralism. It is the policy of not aligning with any power block, right? It does not align itself with United Nations organization. It does not align itself with Commonwealth. It does not align itself with the League of Nations, right? So it is a kind of neutralism. Now, non-aligned movement expresses freedom of decision and choice in deciding each international issue in, on its merit, right? So there is freedom of decision making, there's, there's freedom of expression, right? And finally, we get to realize about NAM is that it is, the, it is a free and independent policy. Now, according to the, uh, according to the founding leader of movement, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, right? The NAM, NAM can be defined as it can be defined as, let me take you that to there. So as Jawaharlal Nehru expressed that, it is not, uh, not entering into a military uh, alliance with any country. So that act of neutralism, right? That act of neutralism, you don't align yourself to any military block, right? In any international organization. And we have said one of the founding leaders was Jawaharlal Nehru of India. Right, that is the that, that, that is the the the, the, the Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru of uh, of India, who was the founding leader of NAM, and we have said he defined NAM as not entering into military alliances or any military bloc with any country, especially those practicing practicing West capitalism or Eastern communism. Now, according to according to our best judgment, an independent approach to foreign policy, not being tied to any particular line of action. So you are neutral in everything. You are neutral in your activities, neutral in your actions, right? Neutral in your decision making. If, if, it's, if it's all about trade, you trade with the communist, you trade with the capitalist, right? You act neutrally. Now, an attempt to maintain different relations with all countries, whether they belong to military blocs or not. So that is why some of these countries who belong to NAM, right, they could not align themselves with any military bloc. They could make trade ties with the capitalist and also the Eastern communist. Now, when was this idea of NAM developed, right? We get to realize that it was developed following the independence of Asian nations. For example, India, Pakistan, uh, Maina and, um, Maima and Sri Lanka. Now, these were some of the nations that gained independence first, right? So it developed as a result of dependency of the Asian nations. And also, in April 1955, Asia and African states held, held a conference in Bandung, Indonesia, whereby the governors agreed that um, they could maintain a neutral stand in everything. And we can say we had a leader from uh, uh, Indonesia who, who is known as Sukarno. We had uh, Marshal Tito, well known, of Yugoslavia. We, are, we had Gamma Nasa of Egypt, also very known. We have got uh, this leader from China, Chou Enlai, who is from uh, China. And finally, we had uh, the leader, who is Jawaharlal Nehru from India. Now, these are some of the pioneers 
of the non-aligned movement. And also, from Africa, we had countries that sent presenters, for example, Lib Liberia, Ethiopia, and Libya. You guess, you guess it that? That is the, the, the leader of, uh, from, uh, from India, right? Then we also have um, Surkano, good. Then we also have this one from uh, Marshal Tito. And finally, we have got uh, Nasa of Egypt, right? Gamal Nasa of Egypt. Now, these are the leaders, or these are the founding leaders of the non aligned movement. And again, just to remind you, you have looked at how, what was its origin, right? Did, what, what did the NAM align itself to? What did it choose to act uh, neutrally, right? What did it not choose to align itself with the capitalists or the communists? And then we have also looked at some of the founding leaders. For example, we have got, we had Surkano, we have got Marshal Tito, we have got Gamal Nasar of Egypt, and Jawara Nehru of India. Now, those are some of the founding leaders of the non-aligned movement. Now, class for assignment, when was the NAM instituted? Which year was NAM, or rather the non-aligned movement, instituted? And for our reference, get to Evolving World, History and Government, the 7th edition by Oxford, Oxford University Press. And as always, the station you're watching is Elimu TV. You have got our contact address. You have got channels so you can uh, watch our videos, get in touch with us, let us watch and learn.